All right, what's up everybody? It's 2 Yellow Auto Sports. I'm here today with Phil. Phil's one of our main installers here at the shop. Uh, in today's video, we're just gonna go over basically what we carry in our pouch. So, you've been tending for how long now? Uh, let's go roughly around five years yeah, now. Yeah, so you probably got at least, easily 500 cars, right? Easily, a thousand if not more, yeah. yeah. So I probably got at least as just as much. I've been in business for seven years and we were tenting probably, usually we'll do a two to three cars every single day for almost five, six years. So you can just count how many cars that might be. But the, 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 the topic of this video is basically, what do we carry in our pouches? Because every tenter is different. You've tented in how many environments? Two, Maybe three, two, three shops. Three shops. Yeah, so you've seen that like, and you've tinted with guys who have like good amount of Years experience. Years right? of experience, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You know, we shout out Double, to James. Double, triple minds. Oh James yeah, has done James a bunch. for sure. So with that, we know that we carry all different tools. And originally, I'm the one that taught you how to tint like five years ago, yeah. four years ago. So you obviously started with the tools that I kind of showed you. But then the nice thing is Phil just came back to the shop about two mo a month ago. And the nice thing about that now is as he comes back, I'm actually learning a lot from him too. Because he's got a lot of experience. And so now I get to learn from him. And the one thing that's kind of different is as soon as he get back, got back to the shop is the first question to me was like, what do you use for this? What do you use for that? And we use different tools. So in this video, we're just going to go over what's in our pouches just to show you guys that to be a good winner tinter, really you can do it with like many different Bare tools. minimums. There's pe I've seen people do it with like a card and a yeah. speed gun. Yeah, I mean, so. you got your standard one inch razor blades people cut film with all the time. It's super easy. Yeah, so people do it differently. Some people freehand. Here we use machine plotter, but you started on freehand too yep. with me before we had a plotter back in the day. So let's just cover what we got in our pouches. Um, so let's go over what you got in your pouch. Like let's go over every single tool that okay. you got and we'll go over what, how we use them, but let's first go with like just what you got in your tool pouch. Okay, first off, we'll start with blades. Um, I've got a picky. A lot of people like red dots or just these standard small little nine mil blades. I like something heavy, something in my hands that I know I don't have to put too much pressure on because it's weighted. And then you gotta have your blade snapper. You know, you can't be snapping blades, throw them on the ground. Also holds a few extra too, so if you need to swap them out, good to go. And how often you swap, I mean, how, how many blades have you gone through? I mean, you probably only use like your one blade, right? I mean, I go through a lot, like honestly. How many do you have in stock? Like how many do you in have here, in your locker? A ton. A ton? A ton, yeah. I mean, I try to go through blades as much as I can. You yeah. know, everyone's always about saving a dime. This is not worth saving. Just replace it. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper to replace this than to replace that. Yeah, and through our experience, like when we used to freehand, I know I've scratched some glass. It's just, if you're a tinter, you're gonna go through that. Like, we've both gone through this where I've definitely scratched glass. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. So, so we know that even using stainless steel blades, right, which is what we're using all the time to make sure we get nice clean cuts and we're not gonna cut glass. Not all glass is created the same. I know for me, like Chevrolets or like Tahoe's Typically and stuff, pretty soft. I've had issues yeah. with them. So you get the razor blade, what do you get I also next? got uh, the scraper blades too. Yet again, these you wanna be really careful of. We were just talking about scratching glass. These will scratch glass if you're not careful. Gotta get the right angle, but these are great for getting off, you know, your manufacturer stickers, warranty stickers, Sirius XM stickers, all that stuff. And then we'll jump over to, let's do cleaning. So everyone's got a doodle bug. Uh, great for cleaning, doesn't scratch glass. Okay, doesn't scratch majority of glass. Yeah. Can get some coating off, especially on those picky Lexus. They'll do that for sure. We'll go down to squeegees. This is an orange crush with a fusion handle. Is that one a softer one or is that a harder one? It's kind of in between. I actually, okay. like when I first landed with you, my yep. favorite one was the pink one, which was the softest one. Yep. And you kind of realize later on down the road that these do wear down. Once the pink one wears down, it's pretty much unusable. You can't get any water out. It's just, you just sit there forever trying to squeegee. These are great. Orange one's my favorite. Some people aren't too big of a fan of the fusion handle. Yeah, so I like that's, it. that's what I was going to ask you next. So I, we'll go over my pouch too later, but we'll talk about this while we're on this topic. I like to use handles because I feel like I get a good leverage. Like, what do you? Why do you choose that one specifically I don't for that? Need one? a lot of leverage. Okay. This one, it's also really compact, so it fits in my pouch really well. But I don't need a lot of leverage for this one. This one's just kind of setting the film, cleaning, all that stuff. It's kind of hard to maneuver around some glass sometimes when you have that handle. Uh, when yeah, it goes down true. to, that's you know, true. like my Blue Max to finish, you know, I, I have the long fusion handle. But like what Two said, you get that torque, you really get that seal, make sure there's no more water left in there. And do you like the grip on those? Because I know I've used them a little bit too myself. And I, I don't mind them, but do you like that grip? Yeah, I love yeah. it. It just 
forms with my palm like perfectly. It just, it just works. Just muscle yeah. memory, it works. That's the biggest thing. If it works for you, just use it. Everyone tends differently. You'll get your own tools. And so to reiterate that orange blade, that's your softer blade that you that, use just to settle the film Just to place. set, you know, okay. clean prep and set the film and all that stuff. Yep. And then we'll go down to, this one's kind of a specialty. Talk about pink blades. This one's very soft. Like I said, it does wear down quite a bit. These are good for small corner windows and just kind of tucking in. Got to have that beveled edge. Some people like it completely flat, you know, it's all preferences, but this is my go-to for doing small corner windows. Do you interchangeably sometimes go to that orange or this one since both, they're both soft and you can kind of settle film onto? Like, yeah. can you, will you sometimes grab either one or and work either way yeah. when you're moving quickly or do you stick primarily to just your orange to set the film in place? I'll go to this one first. Okay. This is always my go-to first, right. but if I can't right. fit this with my hand, I'll go to this guy. Okay. Oh, these two are pretty good for cleaning, prepping, and then setting the film. And then we'll go shrinking cards. I like a blue okay, bondo you, from 3M. Felt. Okay. Yeah, and I use felt. I don't like Teflon. Teflon glides a little too much for me. I like a little bit more feel when I'm going down and the this film. And this one's quite stiff. Okay. Yeah. Pretty stiff card. Stiffer card. So. Yeah. And then I believe that's it. We'll go down to the more angled cards. Let's go little chiseler. Yeah. These things are great for getting out contamination, all those small little creases that you need to get out. They're amazing. Self-explanatory, dime a dozen. And then this guy is actually one of my favorites, these Easy Regis. They're great for, you know, sealing in gaskets or just getting, pushing water down right away. And then when it comes down to actually sealing it, I know some people aren't a fan of these, but Conquerors are my favorite go-to for getting those edges down. That, that's for water on the edge? You on like the it for edge, that? Okay. yeah. Uh, the trick with these is you do have to break them in. Uh, a lot of these come really pointed from factory. Yep, yep. You got to wear them down so they get a little bit more uh, rounded like this. And I noticed when I used to have them too, and yours actually is well-rounded, but yeah. I know that with when I would use these, sometimes they'd break right here. Yeah. And then you'd end up having this like chiseled piece. And did you cut this? Or I did is this not. The come? That's just. Or this is just over that's, here. Yeah, that's over. Okay. This is probably. Conquer. This is a Conquer performance. Yeah, too. this is my do or die. I've had this card. This is probably the oldest card I have in my pouch. So when you squeegee that side of water, so like. It, it, and you've probably seen some more videos that we tint, or if you're just new to learning how to tint, you always got to squeegee those sides because you can't squeegee all the way there because you're going to hit a side wall. So do you trust your hard card more, or you trust that more? Like, which one do you go to when you sweep that side? It depends on the gasket. Okay. If it's loose enough for me to fit this in, I'm going to trust this more because this, okay. this guy is very thin. Yep. If it's a tighter gasket, I'll go with this guy, and this guy usually does the job. But I do like the comfort of knowing this one is going to seal it. Yeah. Uh, you do have to make sure this is wet and lubricated before yeah. you go, because yeah. it'll catch. Yeah. It'll catch, and I've ruined a lot of jobs just finishing up. Let me get one more swipe, boom, catch the film, now I have to restart. And Phil and I have been tending for a long time, so when we mess up a glass, we probably know that we could do that glass again in like two minutes. Yeah. But remember when you're new and you try to do that, it's just, it, it it, it It's sucks. defeating. It, yeah, it'll it humble you. So. Um, and then what's your final, what do you use for your final squeegee when you really want to lock that thumb in place. Yeah, we'll go back to the Blue Max. Yep. This one, I'm a huge fan of. They don't really wear down too much, so you know you'll always get that true seal. I also like it beveled on the side. I don't like it squared. I like it beveled so I can fit in more areas. Uh, everyone's different. I also have the longer fusion handle. I think this is like the five, six inch handle instead of the three inch handle. So I get a little bit more leverage, especially doing back glasses like, like a Tesla, for example, larger back glasses. Uh, this is do or die. I know a lot of people have been swapping blades and trying out different things. Uh, Blue Max has always been true for me. There is the, what is it, the Redline Extractor as yeah, well. Yeah, there's a couple Bulldozer. That's a yellow yeah. one that I like to use. That one's pretty uh, steady too. But we, we started with that like six years ago. And I mean, obviously I have it on mine now. Yeah. I think either one kind of works. I've come to a conclusion that like, sometimes you might have to squeegee twice, right? Just to be sure you get all the water extracted. And then one thing too to know if you're new, sometimes you're not extracting everything. Like yeah. I always tell people, you can, ex you can squeegee that thing three times. You're probably getting, what, 95% if, you, if you're if you using a ton of leverage, but you still have some moisture. So sometimes you do have a little bit of like those, uh, those water spots, but people just got to know that that does dry on its It'll own. It'll cure out. Yeah, unless it's like a air pocket, then you might have to, if you've got time, you can lift it, put some water behind it, but otherwise you're pretty much 
um, yeah, you can just use these ones and they work pretty well. So let's go over what I got. So my pouch is pretty similar to what Phil's got. There's a few things I don't have in here, but same with um, Phil with that white scrubby pad. I'll clean with that. I'll also clean with the small stainless steel blade like Phil has. Like you said, you gotta remove those stickers. Um, so that's what I'll use for cleaning. So let's go over what I got too. So same thing with me. I'm not too picky which razor blade that I like to use. I don't really care which one I'm using to be honest. All I care about is my blade is nice and clean. I, tend, I have this one in my pocket right now. Sometimes I'll have the red Ulfa. It's a, the all metal one. It's nice as well. I, I, have, I haven't tinted with the one that Phil has yet, but I have like kind of just held it in my hand. I, I, you know, he is right. The weight is kind of nice. Um, this one's a little bit lighter. So I have this and then I have corners just like Phil. I just go to the same one, easy reach. Um, I don't use that, uh, what do we call that other one? Conqueror. The Conqueror. So I don't use that one too much. I like to just use this one. I usually can get a good amount of leverage by just torquing it a little bit and sweeping down. Um, so it works for me pretty well. As you can see, this one's a little bit bent just because sometimes I'll kind of heat and put my heat gun around it. The nice thing about these, they're pretty cheap. Yep. So we can replace these all the time. Um, and then as far as uh, shrinking fingers, I use Teflon tape on a hard card like this. He was using the one with the felt, but I like to use this one. They both do the same job. Um, on the outside, because there's a liner, really it's you're not really scratching yeah. nothing. So, but sometimes if you do get a finger on the inside, and like you gotta come back on the inside and shrink that finger, um, depending on what film you're using, because we've both used SunTech in the past, and that's like, you can look at it and it basically scratches. Yeah. So, so for that, uh, Teflon or that uh, felt tape. the felt works well. Pink chiseler, just like Phil has, um, this breaks out like little, if you get like tiny little creases. Some films are more, you know, they'll accept the, you messing with that crease a little better. I know SunTech kind of always sucked for that. It's, if it's there, it's uh, there. Solar effects, yeah. uh, and then you use Expel, Expel a lot too. Expel, I've used Global, all those sorts. Any of the thicker films, like 3M and stuff like yeah. that? And you Chiseler's can almost, like your best friend. Yeah, it's almost like, it's almost like, um, it's almost like, it's not vinyl thick, but it's thick enough that you can almost kind of crush a mistake. Yeah. So we're all gonna make a mistake. I don't care who you are, if you're a tinter out there, you've been doing it for, I don't care how long you've been doing it. Um, we trust our quality coming out of here, and I can tell you that there's always a little bit something, but I think what makes a good tinter is understanding what you got, and then knowing how to fix that. Um, you don't have to throw it away every single time, or you'll go through that window many, many times. Um, as far as squeegees, I use two handles. Um, but I use an orange one. And if you notice, they actually have the same color ones as he does. Um, this one's your setting in place one, so it's a little bit softer, and I'll use this to set in place and get some of the water out. Um, but then when I really want to come down to it, I'll use my blue mags just like Phil. The difference, I use a shorty. Um, the nice thing is Phil came in here to the shop after a month or in the last month that he's been here. I've noticed that the bigger one does make a big difference uh, because you can get more torque on it, which is gonna get more extraction out of the, between the film and the glass. Um, do you use that one a lot for windshields? Cause I know like at the bottom of windshields, sometimes you gotta get down there. Yeah, right? it's kind of nice sometimes cause I'll, I'll go vertical and I'll literally have it on my fingertips and that extra reach really does help yep. me. Cause the, um, boulders are, the boulders are, which is a different tool that we use for back glass like and windshields, right? It doesn't give you that much torque all the yeah, time. Yeah, even the flat glass one sometimes can't get that torque that these will. Yeah, so. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the video. We just wanted to show you the different tools that we both use. There's no right or wrong at the end of the day. Like I always told Phil when we first started is we got to get the film in there. That's our job. How you do it is kind of up to you. Obviously, there's ways that uh, are going to make your job easier. Um, but we pretty much carry the same thing. One last thing I'll mention too is like you like to use the keg. Yeah. Yeah. So you like to use the keg. Why do you like to use the keg? It just makes life way easier. You know, you never have to refill bottles. You refill your keg maybe once or twice, depending on how many cars you're doing, um, depending on the size of the keg. I use a five gallon keg. That's usually pretty good for about five cars, about a gallon a car. Uh, give or take, you know, sometimes if you mess up, you'll use more. But it's just, it's simplistic. You don't have to worry about having, to, you know, you're using your wrist to get all that spray bottle and going. You get a nice even flow from the keg if you keep it at pressure. One swipe and you're good to go. It reduces water usage and it just makes uh, flushing out gaskets way easier. You know, you just spray it down yeah. versus, you know. I do have a question it. for you, so because we got the keg right here. So one thing that people always complain when you talk to like different tinters across the forums and stuff like that, some people, and for me, I'm new to the keg. I actually been tinting for as long as Phil, but I like to use bottles because to me, I just feel more mobile with them. Some people complain that because it does come with a nozzle, 
is, you know, obviously with the nozzle, you got to carry it with you. So and I saw you, you know, you carry it in your pocket or whatever. Um, but people complain that this kind of gets in the way. Like, what do you feel about like, having a, a cord? That yeah, you, you just got to get a system going. I was so against this for a long time because I wanted to be mobile. I wanted to be able to move around freely without having a whole, like, a hose on me the entire time. You find yourself situated, set yourself good, you're fine. I usually have it if I'm doing the front two, I'll leave it in the front of the car. If I'm doing the whole car, I'll leave it in the back and I'll just try to route it with me. You know, try to avoid hitting the car with it and just go around the vehicle. Um, I think once you get a system down with a keg, you'll never go back to a bottle. How many times do you move the keg when you're tinting a car? Almost never. Almost, okay, Almost so never, if yeah. If you keep it in the front, it pretty much stays in the it front. It stays in the okay. front, and I'll move the hose with me. If it stays in the back, it stays in the back. I never move yeah. the keg. Yeah, and so I like to use a bottle. I'm new to the keg. I'm just getting used to it, too. Um, the, the only thing that I see that I've noticed so far for me is, like, I'll pick it up, and the handle will be, like, either up or down, and, like, I'll have to look at my nozzle. So I think that's just something that you probably just got to get used to. Yeah, right? it's muscle memory. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've done it a few, like, fair few times where I'll just just grab it off my belt. It's like this. You know, clearly it's not supposed to be held like this. It's supposed to be held like this. But I'll just go and just... Spray it anyways. As long as it's in your palm, you're good to go. Keep the blade or the fan however you want it. You might want it 90 degree this way. I like it straight right. vertical like this. Right. Makes it easy for me. Yeah. So, and, and I like the bottle. Like I said, I'm getting used to this. I can definitely see where this is efficient because using the bottle after three cars in a day, I mean, my wrist pretty much sucks. Yeah. And if we're, if we're going to be titters for a long time, then uh, probably should preserve your wrist a little bit. Uh, but anyway, that's all in this video. We just want to go over the different tools that we carry. If you guys got any questions, let us know. If you got some other tools that you like to use, please let, please let us know as well. If you think that there's some tools that we should be trying that we don't use, let us know too. We're always trying to be better tinters at what we do. We're technicians at heart, and so knowing how to do our job more efficiently, uh, sometimes for us it's nice as well. We're always learning. We don't think that we know everything, and even if we do, we're always going to get hit with a car that still going to humble us. us. Yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, that's all we got in this video. Uh, leave comments if you got questions. Uh, we'll hit you in the next video.